Hello and welcome to the Django DRF project e-commerce. This tutorial is part of a series of tutorials which you can watch for free. The link to the YouTube course playlist is in the video description. This course is also available on Udemy where you can watch the course ad free, download the tutorial source code and access all updated tutorials and playlist. The link to the course which will always provide the best price can be found in the video description. This section of the course is very much a section where I try to introduce core concepts of Django's to predominantly those who are new to the Django framework. This is a topic which we don't necessarily have to speak about at this point and will probably become more predominant once we actually deploy an application. But I wanted to bring it in now because it does take us to an area which we can then discuss and learn a little bit more about Django in a meaningful way, moving the project forward. Now that we have started a project, we are going to configure our environment, including the settings file, creating some different configurations to prepare the application before we start actually building our API. I find that this is a nice way to introduce the settings file, which is core to our Django project. So inside of our DRF e-commerce folder, we have our DRF main project folder. So inside of this folder, you'll find the settings file. Now you'll find a lot of documentation here, which I'm going to remove, which you can keep if you like, but I definitely don't need to read that again. So you can go ahead and remove all the documentation. I will be doing that maybe uh, off screen. Okay, so you can see inside of here, the settings file is the main or core file, which includes settings, which will have an effect on our application. As we move through this section, we'll introduce ourselves to some of the important aspects. And as we move through the course, we'll dip into this and everything will make sense. So I'm not going to go through this section by section, uh, variable by variable here, setting by setting at this point, because it's kind of irrelevant and we'll only forget the information anyway. So it's going to be better for us to introduce the content as and when we need it, it have a much deeper impact. But what is important to understand is the Django application would not work without the settings file. Now, typically when we start a Django project, we are using the manage.py file. And this is the entry point, if you like, into our application to run our, to run our server, to run our Django application. If we look inside of here, you can see here that it's actually, a, there's a reference here to our settings file. So Django isn't going to run unless we have a settings file, which is prepared in a certain way and has certain settings that are required in order for our Django project to start. So what I'd like you to imagine at this point is currently we're working on our own, on our own computer. We're developing this locally. Now, when we go ahead and actually deploy this application onto a server, that's a completely different environment. And there may be a different operating system. We may have a different uh, databases that we're utilizing. Maybe we have different storage uh, services that we need to access. So we have different settings potentially for when we actually deploy this application on a server to when we're actually just developing our application and using it locally. So based upon the fact that there could be different settings for different environments, it seems like a good idea to think about setting up our project so that we're prepared for when we potentially are going to deploy our application. So what we can do here is we can remove this settings file and we can create a modular approach and have different, different settings files for different environments that we want our Django application to work within. Now, I'm not necessarily promoting this approach because there are many different approaches here. And as and when we deploy our application, we can start to think more deeply about that. But I want to just set something up here initially to give you a general understanding and insight into the manage.py file introduction, if you like, and then into our settings to kind of see that in action, if you will. So let's go into our main product folder here, our DRF e-commerce. This is the subfolder, right click new folder. We're going to create a folder here called settings uh, dot pi. Now, no, settings, sorry, we're going to create a new file, a folder, sorry, folder, folder, settings, there we go. Apologies there, I had a bit of a, a brain lapse. My brain was thinking about the next step. Right, so now we have our settings folder. Okay, so to make this into a module so that we can kind of import files, folders from this folder, let's go ahead and create a new file here. Uh, we're going to create an, an init 
file. And then let's go ahead and add our settings file inside. So I'm just dragging this into the folder, our original settings file. And I'm going to rename this. I'm going to call this, for example, base.py. OK, so as it stands now, if I were to press up and down, because if I press up and down on the terminal here, once I've selected the terminal, it will produce or return the previous command. So it restores a history of commands that we've typed in to say we have to type them out again. So if I go ahead and run the server now that I've moved the settings file, you can see here that we're told that Django can't find a settings file and so it can't run the server. So at the moment, our Django application is broken. So we want to tell Django now to find settings. It's going to be in the settings folder here. And then at the moment, everything is inside the base file. So let's go ahead and in our manage.py file, let's go ahead and DRF, referring to our DRF commerce folder here. Then we have the settings file, folder, sorry, done it again, a settings folder. And now because we have this initialization file here, we can go ahead and kind of access, if you like, um, our base file. So let's go ahead and go into base. And let's try this again. Okay, so you can now see that we changed that, the path to our base settings, and you can now see that the server runs successfully. So let's just close that. So the concept here, or an approach of working here, is that what we can do inside of our settings file, we can create a new file. We could call that, for example, local.py. And then, for example, we could have another settings file for our development server, or um, not our development server, for our production server. So production.py. So that's the server where potentially we're going to end up serving our Django application from online. So this might be called something else, just production server. So I've just called it production for now. So what we can now do is we can start to think about actually removing some of these settings that, which are related to base, to, sorry, local. So from the base, we can start to remove some of these settings and place it into local, which are related to running the server locally on our development server. And then we can go ahead and think about as we develop what settings we might need for production. So that's really something that we probably talk about once we start actually deploying the application. So let me just show you an example of what we might use locally in comparison to, for example, production. So one of those might be, for example, the database that we use. So when we're developing locally, we may use a different database. So if we go back into our base, which is the original settings file, if we move down here, what we have is an area where we define our database. And by default, Django utilizes the SQLite database, and that's all set up nicely for us. So let's go ahead and just remove that. So I've cut that, and I'm going to move that into the local folder right there. Okay, so you can see that the base directory has now, uh, it can't find the base directory because that was a constant that was defined in base. So just ignore that for now. So what I've done now is I've moved the database, the local database that I'm going to use for development into the local.py settings file. Now I might call that local settings to make it a little bit more descriptive, but hopefully you're getting the idea at this point. So now I've done that, what I need to do is I need to import and let local utilize all the information from base and the new information in local. So I just need to import everything in. So to do that, I'm just going to say from the local file, from dot base, let's import all. Okay, so if I do that, then it should now essentially when we run the local settings file it should include everything else in the base file first and then load up our database settings which is related to the local development only right so with that in place let's go now back I'm just going to delete some of these uh, so let's go back into our manage.py file which is already open here so if we go down and take a look now and we can now go ahead and change settings base to local so let's give that a go. I start the server up and you can see that everything looks like it's working okay. So I just close that to control and C. Now this just leads us nicely into the idea that Django has two modes of operation, if you like, or there are two modes of operation. So if we go back into the base here, go to the top, we can see that we have this debug option. Now, while we're working locally, while we're developing locally, 
debug equals true. And what that is, is a setting which, if there is an issue or problem with our application, it's going to be displayed, or it, diagnostic information is going to be displayed on our web page, for example, if we're working with web pages. So that's just going to give us some additional information. Now, this type of information isn't the type of information that I would want to give to any layman who is accidentally or has accessed my website. So when this application is deployed on our server and is running live, then debug needs to be set to false because I don't want to provide that information to anyone else. It can be a security risk. So I can use this as a setting to determine whether my application should be running the local settings or the production settings because I've now told you that essentially if this is set if this setting is set to false then ideally the application should be running in production it should be running on our live server if it's set to true then we're probably working locally so we can use this as a trigger to identify what settings file to actually load up so if we go back into the manage.py file here and we go ahead now import our settings. So let's go from uh, DRF, DRF commerce. So inside of DRF commerce uh, dot settings inside of that folder, let's go ahead and import our base for now. And then what we can do here is we can create a, a conditional statement. So if base dot debug so if our constant debug is set to true, so if debug equals true, then remember if debug equals true, it means that we want to run our local file. So what we're gonna do is we're going to load up our local settings. There we go. Now else, we know that we're now in production. So we want to run our production settings. So We've called that at the moment production, so production. Pro you can call it whatever you like. Pro uh, production. There we go. So that's going to run the production files or settings. So that's just a simple way for us to create settings for multiple environments. And like I said at the start, there are multiple ways to do this uh, and different approaches, and there are helpful modules or sorry, packages which you can install to automate or to easily create an environment which can utilize multiple settings without actually typing this in yourself and explicitly defining this. But the point here ultimately is just to learn a little bit about the settings and hopefully if you are new to Django you've learned something a little bit new there. So let's finish this tutorial by just trying this out. So for example, if we set the debug equals false, that means that the manage.py should now switch to the production settings. Now at the moment, the production settings, well, there aren't any. So we should cause an error. This should not cause an error. There we go. So we can't run because there's nothing there. So let's go ahead from the local. We'll just copy that into the production there. So you can see that we are now importing from base. So if we run the settings, you can see that the allowed host is false. Okay, so it's telling us that we need to set the allowed host. So let's go back into our base. Now what's happening here, allowed host is a security measure which prevents HTTP host headers attacks. So whenever we actually set up our application in a production server, we need to define the allowed host. So this can be a list of strings representing all the host domain names that Django sites can be served on. So typically that's going to be the IP address of our server, for example. So this is definitely, most definitely, a production setting. So let's place that within our production settings file. And let's go ahead and add something. And what we can do, just add a star. Because that is just referring to the fact that um, we're going to allow any host, any IP address. So that's just a quick way of making sure that it's going to work. So now, again, we've set the in, in our base, we set debug equals false, so it should be utilizing production. So now when we go ahead and run our server, you can see that our server is running. And we're even told here which settings that we're using. You can see here 
uh, DRF settings production. So we're definitely using production there. So let's go ahead and now set this to true, debug equals true. So we should now be running our, our local settings. And there we go. So there we have the Django DRF settings local.